Hi there, my name is Tiffany. I'm a college and career advisor. I have a background in recruitment at Google and went to UC Berkeley. This channel focuses on college and career advice, so go ahead and subscribe to get more helpful content. In today's video, we're focusing on advice for all international students with a flavor of Vietnamese. I'm a Vietnamese American. I grew up in California, so I don't have an international student experience, but I did invite some of my friends for the Vietnamese Googlers Network, as well as the Vietnamese Student Association to share all of their wisdom and give you advice that they wish they knew before. And we'll also have Vietnamese subtitles, uh, but once again, this video is totally applicable for all international students. Hi everyone, my name is Trang and I am a UC Berkeley student majoring in data science and e economics. My hometown is in Ho Chi Minh City and for the majority of my schooling career in Ho Chi Minh City, I went to Ishmix, um, short for International School of Ho Chi Minh City. Yeah. Great, thank you so much for joining us, Trang. Mm -hmm. And then second, we have Hugh. Hello, everyone, and thank you for uh, Tiffany for having me here. My name is Hugh. Uh, I came from Ho Chi Minh City too, like Trang. When I was in, in Ho Chi Minh City, I went to school in Phổ Thông Năng Hiếu, and then I went to the U.S. in 2011, attending Stanford. In 2016, I went to do my PhD in Carnegie Mellon, and after graduated, I joined Google. And then last but not least, we have Chi. Hi everyone, and thank you uh, Tiff for inviting me to this forum as well. So my name is Chi Nguyen, and I'm actually, um, my hometown is actually Hanoi, born and raised in Hanoi. I've been in the U.S. for uh, 20 years now. Uh, I went to school at Drexel University uh, in Philadelphia, but prior to that I went to a high school in, called Thang Lam in Hanoi. Um, right now my current career is a program manager for a real estate organization within Google. Um, and uh, we help building Google Office around the world. Great, thank you so much for being here, you all. And as you know, uh, we've invited everyone intentionally based off of how long they've been in the US, in their career path and in college, of course. So uh, it should be a good session today. All right, let's get started. The first question that we have for you all is, do you have any advice for applying to college in the US? As we all know, it's a very long process and there's a lot of information out there. So any advice would be super helpful. So I think my two cents for college application from Vietnam, especially into the U.S., is uh, first of all, you should uh, you should try to start as early as possible because this is, as Tiff said, this is a long and hard process. So, for example, if you want to go to school in the U.S. after you graduate from high school in Vietnam, then I think uh, you need to start uh, your application process as soon as sometimes in your 11th grade, which is the you know, junior year. But after you know when you start, you need to carefully and thoroughly research the application process and prepare yourself for it. For example, if you are planning to take a bunch of tests, such as the TOEFL, the SAT, IELTS, whatever, make sure that you reserve enough time for yourself to study, to take the test, and just in case you take the test and your scores don't look well, to retake the test. All of them take time, so be careful and uh, be prepared. Uh, my second advice is that you know, in uh, is that in your application packet there are many facets of you of yourself. So make sure that you highlight the positive side and keep the negative side a little bit to yourself. So for example, if you are an outgoing person who is very good at extracurricular activities, then make sure that you know your activities comes up everywhere in your uh, application packet. On the other hand, if you are, if, if you don't have a very good SAT score, then just don't talk about it. And you know, in, in, in the modern day, some schools actually allow you to not submit your SAT scores. So consider those options as well. And I will, I'll repeat myself, but really be careful and make sure that you thoroughly research everything in your process. That's my two cents. It's great. Thank you so much, Hugh. Yeah, adding on to um, the application process that Hugh just mentioned, I want to like um, give some tips that are more focused on the essay writing process. So usually for students applying to the U.S., you would have to write one main essay, become an app, and the um, and an, an additional essay, um, otherwise known as the why the school essay. So for the common app, um, a good starting point would be to see for yourself what a standard and good essay would look like. And a good place to start would be to read um, the Ivy League's 50 successful essays. These are super helpful and I found that um, they really showed me um, what a, an essay should 
be like and how to start, how to make it personable, and how to make it interesting. Um, and for the wider school essay, you would want to start researching the school. Um, and a good way to do this would be to like go on YouTube and see um, vlogs of recent admits or like students of that school to see what the culture of the school are like, um, the pros and cons, and you can see for yourself, decide if you want to like really apply to the school and if your values resonate with the school um, missions and what they're doing. And that that will help you answer the why of the school essay. But overall, yeah, be very personable. Um, write about what you want to take out of the college experience. And always, always try to proofread with your peers, your teachers, and your counselors. Yeah. That's so important, proofreading and reading the prompt properly. So I agree. How about you, Chi? Yeah, I think for me, um, kind of going on the same line with what Chang said is in order for you to stand out on your essay, you also want to focus on like how to kind of use craft the message via your extracurriculum, right? So um, a lot of us, you know, we have passion about certain things. Some of it, you could be like sport, you know, you're very good at basketball, soccer. Some other people might be passionate about painting and drawing. And then other people might be passionate about like giving out to charity and volunteering. So if you can describe those, your passion into your essay and tell the story, and then, you know, work through your stories to kind of like help make yourself unique, right? Meaning like, what, how does this passion drive drive you as a person to improve on yourself, but also make impact for other people that, you know, kind of your skill set kind of resonate with them. So, for example, I do have um, a nonprofit organization that I run. I have a lot of students that come and participate in my nonprofit organization by either championing a project or fundraising for the project. And then they write the story within the application about how impactful this opportunity for them from a learning to like fundraising to actually getting to the school, learning and connect with the student and how they want to, you know, become eventually future coming back to to help influence other kids to do the same thing. So those are the per very personal story that you can include into your application and really kind of set you apart from all the others. I love that Chi, and I will attest Chi is highly involved in her own endeavors of having her nonprofit because for hope and actually went on that trip with her to volunteer in Vietnam and it was very impactful. So I love that you all shared such great insights on making a holistic application process. So let's move on to the elephant in the room, which is the money aspect. How do you afford to live and study in the US, especially as an international student. And since you all have done it successfully and then trying currently in college, any insights on how you can afford college? Uh, scholarship researching process is probably a much, much more difficult process for international students, um, simply because if you are wanting to apply to like public schools like UC Berkeley, these schools are um, state funded. So um, they are less willing to give out financial aid packages to students overseas because obviously they have to prioritize students in state. Um, so if you really need, if you really want to go abroad and like you need that support, then um, try to look out for private schools or liberal arts schools because those are um, historically uh, more generous with their some funding, uh, with their funding and, and financial award packages. Um, but not all hope is lost. If you still want to like apply to like UC Berkeley, which is a very good school, um, you you can like um, look out for third party associations or alumni associations. Those are good ones um, that also um, give out awards based on merit. Thank you for sharing, Jan. I actually just wanted to add my two cents uh, to to what you just shared. So I was fortunate because uh, I went to school, when I went to college, they are quite generous with the financial aid packages. However, other than financial aid, it's another channel of income for college students. So you know, if you are an international college student in the US, it is perfectly legal for you to go work on your internships. So you can do you can go work for between three and six months a year and if you are in majoring in one of the stem field i don't know tech science math econ uh, accounting then uh, chances are that you you can find a job uh, that uh, that offers an internship position um, and they i would say they pay really well 
uh, in in my time, it was possible to get a like seven or eight k monthly, and those money helped me a lot in my college year. These days, I'm, I I think they 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 are, they will pay you even more. So pay attention to that, and re re remember, it's completely uh, legal for us to do that. Wow, that is yeah. a huge tip. Yeah. I, I I can add on to the two cents that you mentioned. Um, so there's also a lot of program at school uh, within the U.S. offer come something called co-op. It's a, just another form of internship, but it's much more structured and it allow you. Basically, the school has an existing what cooperative program that they work with the employer, and then they basically help set up a channel for you to connect to the channel to the employer directly. And uh, in particular, for my case, I went through the co-op program at Drexel University. Um, you actually go through a five-year program instead of tradition of four-year. But within that five-year, you actually go through three co-op. And you go to school for six months, go to work for six months. So during that six months, it's a really great opportunity to build that, you know, not only experience about the real-life work experience, but it help you also build the connection to the company and potential future company that come back and hire you. I have, in fact, I actually got my first job out of college from the company that hired me as internship. So is my sister and a few other friends that are within my network. So that's a really good opportunity for you. Not only financially, you can earn those income during your college life and can supplement the, you know, the financial package. But in the future, it also set out you a path that you already have a connection so that in when you graduate, you have an open door for you to kind of go into actually a real job out there in the market. That's a really good point about setting yourself up for success and getting employment immediately after you finish graduation. And something that I also see students do well from international perspective is there's community colleges. So instead of going straight to a four year institution and paying that bill for a yearly fee, you would be saving a lot of costs in an incremental value in going to community college first and then transferring. So that's another advice for you all as well. So thank you for um, sharing your tips on how to save some money. Um, let's move on to the next question, which is around career advice for students. And a lot of times students are thinking about going to college, but they don't really think about what career path makes the most sense. So given you're all very successful in your field, as well as um, picking your major at UC Berkeley, would love to get some advice for the students here. To be honest with you, I think there's so many, many opportunity out there in terms of career choice. Often we grow up, we just was told like, oh, you should be a doctor, you should be an engineer, you should be this and that. And it's like literally you can ha count the career on your fingertip. But reality there is out there, there's like thousands of jobs out there in the market. One other thing that I advise the team is looking for the trend of what is a career is that going to be demand, you know, five, 10 years from now on, because, you know, for example, right now we're promoting STEM. So there's a lot of people just going out and going to STEM, which I bet still good demand. But then that means there's a lack of, you know, resource in accounting and finance and nursing. Some of the employer has come to me and said, I can't hire people because there's not enough student in this, uh, you know, career. So then, you know, like how can we actually predict the future so that we can actually get into the career that is going to be, you know, after you graduate, you're going to be easy to get a job. You know, my second advice, actually try an arrow. In fact, I actually went to some career before I actually went on computer science. But then I realized, hold on, this is not, not my choice. I didn't enjoy my internship. I just switched career midway through. It doesn't hurt to explore. Right. And then also sometimes when you graduate, you will do completely something different. Your career will take you along the way and just learn open to opportunity. So. Don't be afraid that you have to set in stone today that you have to be a nurse or you have to be a doctor. You can always switch in the future. So don't hesitate to do so. Take risks. I love that. And I'll link some data for all the different employment rates and trends that you could compare for current years as well as looking forward. So leverage those tools to see which ones make the most sense. And second, do personality skills assessment tests to see what you actually would enjoy and what you're good at as well. So uh, we'll link that down below. How about you or Chang? 
Uh, I'll go next. Thank you, Chi, for the advice. Like, you know, uh, exploration and trials and errors are always helpful, not just for the career in, in college, but it's, it's, they are still meaningful advices to me at this point in my career. I'm going to add it. I think the students, uh, regardless where they are, they could be in Vietnam or in the US or wherever they are in their career, it is important to be proactive at uh, and then seek some good networking opportunities. For, uh, and I say, I'm saying this for my personal experience, being able to seek a good mentor and to learn from them and then to maintain the, our connections with them has been extremely fruitful for me from college into my master, into my PhD and into my current career now. You get to know the good people and you get to learn from them and then you you know, in some cases, many companies these days, they do, uh, they, they, they recruit based on referrals. So if some of your mentors actually say some nice words about you in uh, to those companies, their doors are open for you. You are of a huge advantage. So to sum up my advice, uh, be, please be try to be proactive in networking and get to know the good people and get to learn from them and maintain your relationship with them. Yes, and we all love data. So I will back up Hugh's point that at referrals are getting hired at a 50% rate versus online applicants is just 2%. So networking helps. Okay, Chang? She and Hugh's told um, everyone also, you know, been helping me a lot because like, even I'm even though I'm like a sophomore in, in college, I still like have doubts about like regarding how my career would look like and what majors I want to do. I started out as an econ major mostly because of parental pressures. But like after taking like the first coding class, I just thoroughly love, love coding. And you know, it really instilled into me that new idea that, you know, girls can do it too. Like like in back in Vietnam I just never thought that I would do coding just because everyone around me just tell me that um, like girls can't think rationally or logical. And it seems so silly now that I'm in the U.S. and I'm being exposed to all these new ideas. But, you know, just like open yourself up, shop around, take new courses and see for yourself what you want to do. Probably will figure out along the way um, where your passion lies. And yeah, just don't be too hard on yourself early on. It's okay to be so confused and lost. Yeah. It's funny, right? Because... Chang didn't really think about computer science because of outside pressures. And then she thought about computer science because of outside pressure. So it just shows you there's a whole bunch of different perspectives, right? You should listen to yourself and what you want to do and what you're good at and what interests you, all that. So let's um, wrap up. We have one question left, which is any college and life advice that you did not previously mention that you wish you knew before please do share them with the students listening. My advice is wrapped in three words. Do, do not stress out. I don't, um, you know, when I was in college, I was really stressed when my, when I got a B, sometimes a C, and then when my GPA is not very high, I couldn't sleep. I did bad things to harm myself. As you advance in your career, nobody is going to ask you again about your college GPA. So, you know, enjoy yourself. Doesn't mean that you should party every day, but uh, uh, you know, do not stress out, um, and uh, be prepared to learn uh, and to grow. Those are more important things. So, but you know, it's very important. Do not stress out. It's not worth it. Yeah. You know, thank yeah. you so much for sharing vulnerability as well, right? A lot of people don't mention how tough it can get and how stressful and how to properly deal with it, right? Like journaling really helps, talking to others, taking a walk outside, see the sun. Like you might be in the library all day sleeping there. Like it, just going for a walk can really change things and those perspectives. So thank you for sharing that. I think um, along the side with heal, like don't stress out. And also like, like you said, GPA, it's not everything, you know, even if you polish your 4.0 GPA, when you get out there in the career, people don't look just at your GPA. They look at your personality. They look at their soft, your soft skill. Can you present? Can you, you know, work under stress? So I would say make sure you balance between your technical expertise as well as your kind of people skill, soft skill side. Right. Um, so for me, I think it took me a long time to get confident in myself. To this day, I probably still say, oh, my God, how I'm delivering this presentation. All that stuff takes time. But at least you push yourself out there to learn. Don't you know, don't just go, you know, nine to five, just trying to like complete your test, 
Someday it's okay to fail in this test. I, I do have to admit, I have a class that I have made, barely made it to a D just so I don't have to retake the class again. But like you said, GPA is not everything. As long as you, you know, like comfortable, go out networking, making friends, get to know people. That's how you get more confident. And then, you know, build up your, you know, I would say like, you know, like you said, relationship with your career, how you experience, it's all about experience. When you go to, uh, you know, I think Tiff can talk more about career advice, but when I look at the resume, so experience is very key, but for you as a student, how to get to that experience is, you know, it's challenging, right? So leverage the internship, leverage, you know, like things that you can learn from, you know, even just a project, you, you can do research as well. That's also experience, but show that you have those in your resume that that will set you apart from other people. I think that's a great advice. And I've seen Chi give talks to hundreds of people before. And it's funny that she says that she gets nervous. You can't tell, right? And a lot of the advice that I've seen from a lot of top people that are getting out there and really challenging their uncomfortability is fake it till you make it. There's times where I just tell myself, you're going to do great, even though deep down inside I'm nervous. So just do it. Go out there. Put yourself in positions for opportunities. So thank you, Chi. How about you, Chang? Yeah, I think what she said about like, you know, and also you too, about getting close and have like a good relationship with your career advisor is probably a good thing because it can be really a daunting process for international students to like start researching about OPT, CPT, summer internship. And I was really like taken back when I first found out that for Berkeley, you have to like at least have two semester of in-person classes to actually be qualified for like a summer internship. And that was so stressful for me because I totally didn't know that and COVID really impacted a lot of my decisions later on. Um, so try to get in touch with your career advisors. Also look out for um, programs that target at like minority groups like J.P. Morgan Chase, um, Women in STEM, and all those of sort of like diversity programs that are usually very helpful in getting you to kickstart your screening process and get that in first interview. Um, and it's also always nice to like if you're um, struggling to find your first you find your first internship start small with like startups and you can find those startups that are actively looking for um, students to hire from sites like AngelList and you know those sort of websites that you want to like start researching about and you don't have to be stressed about it just like spend maybe 10 to 15 minutes every day looking for information and that will be really helpful in the end yeah I think that's a great point. Leverage your resources. And then as professionals, we have recruiters within our company too. So hence me. So if you ever need advice, just uh, look into these different platforms online as well. Well, that was a great session. Thank you so much, you all, for all this great advice. I hope this is helpful for all the students listening. Please do leave comments down below. Let us know if you have any questions. And if these panel discussions are helpful for you, we'll continue doing them as well. Go ahead and subscribe for more helpful tips. And we hope you take care. Thank you. Bye-bye.